For 50 weeks of each year, Bras Carberry is just a sleepy West Cork village. For the other two, it is the focal point of the Irish in many parts of the world as they prepare to establish their national identity on March 17 through the Shamrock. Ross Carberry is the country's biggest shamrock growing area because of its mild, ideal climate. It was here the first home-produced shamrocks were grown, something that has become increasingly important because of their greater resilience over the wild variety. Mrs O'Keefe, you use send shamrock all over the world. Oh yes, yeah, before I retired. To where actually? Um, to, well, I start in my own country, a lot of the west of Ireland and uh, USA, Britain of course, a pile of it over there, and um, to the Falcon Islands, India, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and so forth. How did, how did this tradition here in Roscarbury start? Well, I tell you now, it started years and years ago. Um, you know, the country people are not so well up in making up parcels and being uh, a shopkeeper. They thought that uh, we could make up a little bits of shamrock for them to send to their relatives in the USA. So from time to time, uh, we just got um, kind of an idea that it would be a good thing to advertise it and send it away. I believe that you did in fact meet English royalty when you were bringing over the shamrock to the Irish Guards. Oh, I did in 1950. Um, I was a guest of honour at uh, the 50th anniversary of the Irish Guards. And uh, it was a marvellous day, a day I'll never forget. So the, 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 was the king? The oh, he was. The king was there that day, and uh, the queen, and Princess uh, Elizabeth, as she was then, and Princess Royal. Um, um, all wearing the shamrock, I suppose. All wearing the shamrock, and they're very proud of it. Very, very proud of it indeed. I'll never forget the queen when she got her little silver basket of shamrock. All them. Her, she, her face lit up and she was so delighted to get it. Uh, I'll never forget that, the expression of her face. Have you noticed a big increase in the price of shamrock from your young days? Oh, yes, much cheaper. Um, of course, like everything else, uh, it's gone up in price. If people go through a lot of trouble in our planting it. They have to set it and then transplant it and uh, keep it... Um, in good uh, order all the time you see you can't have any weeds or anything like that growing. Shamrock is big business in March in Ras Carberry. Some estimate it brings close on two thousand pounds into the village for most householders cultivate a garden of it. Boys and girls aid their parents in picking it. John O'Regan, as you well know this has been a wet, wet winter. Now as a shamrock grower, how has this affected you? Oh it was very good for the shamrock this year because the shamrock requires a lot of moisture and this was one year it got plenty of it. Last year was too dry and therefore there was a scarcity of it. So you were, you, you welcomed the rain? Well, I suppose up to a point, those who were growing it did welcome it. Now, if, sh if shamrock is more plentiful, I suppose we can assume that it's going to be cheaper as well for the man. Well, it's only natural, supply and demand, then it's all to, they're waiting for. It strikes me that growing shamrock is a very easy way to make money. You just put down your seed and you pull up your, your plant and your money. Well, you'll try it next October and see what you'll have by your time. <laughs> What's involved, actually? Well, the seed has to be saved, the ground has to be prepared, and the crop must be tended and minded, and then harvested. And, oh, and over what period of time does it take? Well, it there? takes from October until March to grow in the ground, like. And is the return at the end well worth it? <laughs> That's a six-mark question. <laughs>